This screencast is to talk about a slightly more complicated case of circular motion where there isn't just one force acting on the object that's making a circle, but maybe multiple forces. For example, let's say that I'm standing and I'm swinging a yo-yo around in an around-the-world trick uh, in a circle like that, and I'm interested in analyzing its motion when it's at the bottom of its circle. What are the forces acting on it? Well, there's tension up uh, in the direction of the string, and, uh, and there is a gravitational force down. And which of these is the stronger force? Well, if I have told you that the uh, object is moving in a circle, I have told you um, that uh, there is a centripetal component of acceleration. The fact that it's making a circle uh, means that uh, the uh, that there has to be an inward acceleration. So I know that the tension force exceeds the gravitational force. If the gravitational force exceeded the tension force, the object wouldn't be accelerating in towards the center, and it wouldn't be making the path of a circle. Um, and I'm going to say, at this instant, the net force is centripetal. So at this instant, the object can be considered to be in uniform circular motion. I'm going to complicate this in just a moment here. Because let's consider the yo-yo at this moment in its around-the-world path. A tension force can only be in the direction of a string, and a gravitational force can only be down. So I think that the free body diagram has to look a little bit like this. And when I um, sort of add these, uh, add these vectors, I see that the <laughs> I see that the net force. See that the net force uh, points down and a little bit to the right. So what's going on if there's a down and to the right net force on this yo-yo? Well, I'm going to consider that that down and uh, to the right force has two components: a centripetal component of net force and a tangential component of net force. Remember when we were rolling the bowling ball around? A tangential component of force changed the speed of the ball. A centripetal component of force kept it going in a circle. There's a net force that has a centripetal component and a tangential component. So there must be, in the acceleration of the yo-yo in this case, there must be a centripetal component of acceleration. That's that vector there. And a tangential component of acceleration. That's that vector there. See how I've taken this down and to the right net force and made some axes that are perpendicular to each other, where one of the axes is the centripetal axis at this instant, and the other axis is the tangential axis at that instant. In uniform circular motion, uniform, where the speed doesn't change. There is no tangential component of acceleration, uh, which means that the whole acceleration is the centripetal compo component of acceleration. The acceleration redirects the velocity vector, but doesn't change the magnitude of the velocity vector. It doesn't change the speed of the object. In non-uniform circular motion, that is to say, motion where there is a circular path, but not uniform speed, and I think that is the case with the yo-yo, then it's the centripetal component of acceleration that equals v squared over r by the logic we were using in the previous slides. The centripetal component of acceleration redirects the velocity to keep the path in a circle. And the tangential component of acceleration changes the magnitude of the velocity, changes the speed. For all circular mo motion, the centripetal component of acceleration is equal to v squared over r, and those other um, equations too. Uh, that's true of any circular path. When the speed additionally is changing, there is a tangential component of acceleration that may obey some other laws.